It's day two of Russia's invasion. Today, all the focus was on Ukraine's capital, the battle for Kiev. It's not a question of if Russia takes the capital, it's a question of when. Ukraine is not giving up yet, but the odds are stacked against them. Around dawn, the Russian this Russian plane was shot down. It crashed into a residential area in Kiev. Were there people inside? Was it unmanned? What was it targeting? We still don't know. This hunk of metal is all that remains of it. Right now, Russia is at the gates of Kiev. The biggest battles are happening on the outskirts. Overnight, one air base made all the news. Ostomil. You can see why the Russians want it. Ostomil has a full-fledged airstrip. It is just 50-odd kilometers from Kiev. If Russia takes it, they can use it as a staging ground, land their planes, bring in supplies. And early on, they managed to do that. Russia took control of Ostomil. The helicopter swooped in on the airbase. Take a look. Уже штук 20 пролетіло. Не видно українського герба. Точно російські. Прямо над хатами. Прямо ось над хатами літають падли. Полетіли в сторону аеропорта. Бомблять аеропорт. Чути, що йде бій. Вже штук 30 нарахував точно. Chances are it was a bloody operation. Russia claims 200 Ukrainian soldiers were killed. The Kremlin is planning to deploy paratroopers to guard the airbase, but they don't plan to hold fort. The plan is to push on to Kiev. Russian ground troops have reached the Obolon district in Kiev. Let me pull up the map again. Obolon is just north of central Kiev, just 16 kilometers, one six, 16 kilometers from the president's office. And here's what Obolon looks like right now. Deserted streets, Russian tanks moving around, Russian military vehicles ferrying soldiers. From the looks of it, there was very little opposition. Of course, Ukraine does not admit that. They say it's a street fight now, that their soldiers are challenging the Russian advance. But you have to ask, how much longer? If Russia cuts through to central Kiev, they face a tough question. Do they march in or do they lay siege? If they march in, things could get ugly. There could be street-to-street -street fighting. And if that happens, there will be massive losses. More than 3 million people live in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, 3 million people. In the last few hours, 10,000 of them have received guns and ammo. These pictures were shot by a resident in Kiev. Hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers are fanning out and they're carrying ammo, running frantically to their defensive positions. Clearly, Russia has cornered Ukraine. The shift was seen in President Zelensky's own temperament. He ditched the formal suit today, instead appearing in a T-shirt. You could sense the feeling of betrayal in his voice. With NATO reduced to a bystander, Zelensky offered talks with Russia. Today, I have asked 27 European leaders whether Ukraine will be in NATO. I have asked directly. Everyone is afraid. No one answers. But we are not afraid. We are not afraid of anything. We are not afraid to defend our country. We are not afraid of Russia. We are not afraid to talk to Russia. We are not afraid to talk about anything, about security guarantees for our country. We are not afraid of talking about neutrality. We are not NATO members at the moment. But what guarantees will we get? And most importantly, which countries will give us those guarantees? Two things to note here. One, the absolute betrayal by NATO. Their toothless sanctions, their empty words, all of it contributed to this invasion. And two, this offer of talks, it is not organic. Maybe it is better if Ukraine is neutral. But that choice must be made independently. And that is not the case here. Russian soldiers are marching on Kiev. So this is not independent choice. This is blackmail. Across Ukraine, Russian missiles continue to pound cities. Let me show you the biggest flashpoints. Mariupol on the Sea of Azov. Kharkiv in the northeast. Kiev, the capital, of course. Odessa in the south. And Chernobyl, which has now been captured by the Russians. These are the big flashpoints. Almost all central and eastern cities are on Russia's radar. Out of them, Kharkiv has seen some intense fighting. These pictures should give you an idea. Destroyed tanks, casualties lying on the floor. The Battle of Kharkiv is a bloody one. For Russia, the big advantage is their air superiority. They can take out air defense systems. They can drive out ground positions. But not every strike is on a military position. Let me show you another picture. 
Do you see the plume of smoke rising? That building is a hospital. It was hit by Russian missiles, killing at least two civilians. Simply put, this is a war crime. According to international law, civilian facilities are not targets, so hitting hospitals is beyond evil. Does this mean Ukraine is primed for invasion or surrender? Well, right now, it seems to be the case. Russia's military might is simply too overwhelming for them. Having said that, the Ukrainians have something that the Russians do not. You see, Russia here is an invading force. They're fighting for politics. Ukrainians, on the other hand, are fighting for freedom and survival. And this next video sums up that attitude. A Russian warship was poised to attack a Black Sea island. On this island were more than a dozen Ukrainian soldiers. The warship demanded a surrender. Listen to how the, Russian so the Ukrainian soldiers reacted. <laughs> We're not sure how the story ended. Some reports say all 13 soldiers were killed, that the naval base was captured. Either way, it's an example of Ukraine's spirit. With enough help, they could have repelled the Russians. But the West failed. With their military aid, with their sanctions, and with their false promises, this failure has put Ukraine at Russia's mercy. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.